We are now at the end of the aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids chapter. By now, we are familiar with the various ways in which these carbonyl compounds can be prepared. We have discussed their important chemical reactions and also the characteristic tests that are used to differentiate these compounds from one another. So in this video, we are going to apply all that we learned in this chapter by solving a couple of conversion questions. Conversion reactions are important as they involve the applications of different types of chemical reactions, understanding of various reagents, their specific uses and conditions under which these specific reagents can be employed. Now these questions will also help you to think critically and develop strategies to synthesize organic compounds. So let's begin with a simple conversion question here. So in this question, we need to identify the structure of our product D that is formed at the end of this reaction. And a starting compound has two hydroxy groups. You can see that here we have a primary alcohol CH2OH and here we have a secondary alcohol CHOH. And when we treat this compound with a mild oxidizing agent like PCC, what would happen? It would get oxidized to the corresponding carbonyl compounds which are ketone and aldehyde. So the product A looks something like this, where the secondary alcohol has been oxidized to the corresponding keto group and the primary alcohol has been oxidized to aldehyde group or CHO. Now in the next step we are reacting this compound with methanol in the presence of dry HCl. Now this is a classic example of converting a carbonyl compound to the corresponding acetal. So here at which side does the nucleophilic addition take place? The aldehyde or the keto side? Obviously, the more reactive side is the aldehyde side, which means the aldehyde gets converted to the corresponding acetal, right? So, in the next step, we are converting the aldehyde to the corresponding acetal. In other words, we are protecting the aldehyde group so that the reaction specifically occurs at the keto group. And this again because the aldehydes are much more reactive than the ketone. And whenever we have compounds which have both of these groups, and we want the reaction to happen specifically at the keto group, we would have to mask the reactivity of the aldehyde group by converting it to an acetal. Now this is something that you are already familiar with. So let's look at the next set of reaction where we are reacting this compound with a Grignard reagent CH2 double bond CH MgBr. Now here in Grignard reagent we have a nucleophilic R- or alkyl group which can attack our carbonyl site. So here what happens is the alkyl group of the Grignard reagent attacks the carbonyl carbon and gives us a product that looks like this. Now in the second step hydrolysis takes place and a final product would look something like this. Final product in the sense a product C would have this particular structure. Now the important thing to remember here is that the second step of the nucleophilic addition of a Grignard reagent is the acidic hydrolysis. So in this step O- gets converted to OH group but at the same time acetals being highly sensitive to acidic medium would convert back to the original carbonyl group which is the aldehyde group here. So in this acidic hydrolysis step in addition to getting our final product here we are also converting our acetals back to our aldehyde group. Now imagine if we did not protect the aldehyde group using an acetal. Let me explain. So what if we did not go through this step and we went directly from PCC to this step. So that is we are treating this compound A with Grignard reagent in which case a reaction would give this particular product. So you can see how different this product C and this product is right. Here the entire reaction takes place at the aldehyde side because it's obviously more reactive and these groups the OH and CH double bond CH2 groups would occupy this side and not this side. And since we want the groups to be added at this side, we obviously have to mask the reactivity of aldehydes by converting into an acetal. This is why acetals become very crucial in conversion reactions, especially when we have highly reactive group and we want the reaction to happen at the less reactive site. Alright, moving ahead. In the final step, we are reacting this product C with CrO3 in the presence of H2SO4. Now this is again a very strong oxidizing agent which would end up oxidizing our aldehyde group to the corresponding carboxylic acid. So our final product D would look something like this where we have the aldehyde group oxidized to COOH group the corresponding carboxylic acid and we have these groups remaining intact. So this is the structure of our product D that is formed at the end of this reaction. Let's look at one more reaction. 
So in this question, we need to figure out the products Q and R. Now it looks like a lot of reagents here, but don't worry. We are going to break it into two parts where we first analyze the reactions from P to Q and then go from Q to R. Okay. So let's look at these reactions. All right. So our starting reactant is benzoic acid. And in the first step, we are reacting the benzoic acid with thionyl chloride in the presence of pyridin, SOCl2, correct? Now, you might remember from the chemical reactions of carboxylic acids that the reaction of a carboxylic acid with thionyl chloride is a classic way to prepare corresponding acid chlorides, right? So, benzoic acid would react with thionyl chloride to give us benzoyl chloride, which is C6H5COCl. In the second step, we are reacting this acid chloride with a Grignard reagent CH3MgBr. So here, a nucleophilic addition reaction takes place where the CH3 minus of a Grignard reagent attacks the carbonyl carbon of our acid chloride, giving us this particular tetrahedral intermediate. Now here, the double bond gets restored and with the elimination of a chloride ion, we get the final product which is the ketone. Now remember, whenever there is no mention of how much amount of Grignard reagent is taken, we kind of assume that it is one equivalent. Because if we had excess of Grignard reagent, then the CH3- would further attack this keto group and give us a tertiary alcohol. So as long as excess is not mentioned, we can kind of assume that we are using one equivalent of Grignard reagent here. So with one equivalent of Grignard reagent, when it reacts with an acid chloride, we get ketone as the product. Now the last step is reaction with sodium borohydride. Now what happens here? We know that sodium borohydride is a reducing agent and it reduces the carbonyl compound to corresponding alcohol. So here when we treat the ketone with sodium borohydride, we get a secondary alcohol as you can see here. So this is the product Q. Let's now look at the second part of the reaction where we are reacting Q or this particular secondary alcohol with another set of reagents. Now in the second part of the reaction, we are reacting the secondary alcohol with a set of reagents to get a final compound R. So let's look at the first reaction where we are reacting a secondary alcohol with HCl in the presence of ZnCl2. Now can you recall what this reagent is exactly? We have encountered this reagent specifically in a previous chapter on alcohols, phenols and ethers where this particular reagent was used to differentiate primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. Do you remember what this reagent is called? Yes, Lucas reagent, correct? Now, of course, primary alcohols react best with Lucas reagent, but secondary alcohols also react moderately well with Lucas reagent, giving us a substituted product, where the OH group has been substituted by the chloro group. So, let me remove this. So here, the product obtained at the end of the first reaction is a substituted product where the OH group has been replaced by a chloro group. Now when we react this chloro compound with magnesium in the presence of ether, we get a yes, Grignard reagent. Isn't that how we synthesize Grignard reagents? By reacting alkyl halides with magnesium in the presence of ether to give us RMgX. So in this case, the Grignard reagent that we get here is RMgCl. Now in the third step, we are reacting this Grignard reagent with dry carbon dioxide. Now this, as we already know, is a classic way of synthesizing carboxylic acids with one carbon extra. And how so? By introducing one extra carbon through this carbon dioxide. So in this reaction, we get this particular product, COO- is introduced. So O has a negative charge and MgCl obviously has a positive charge. And this carboxylate ion on hydrolysis gives us the corresponding carboxylic acid. So what we've essentially done in this set of reactions is convert a secondary alcohol to a chloro compound and then into a Grignard reagent and then react a Grignard reagent with dry carbon dioxide to get our corresponding carboxylic acid. So this is our product R.